Okay, so uh, Let It Go For A While is the name of my topic. I'm not going to burst into song. Uh, my name is Todd. That's all I have time to say about that. <laughs> and so what we're going to be talking about today is obviously the let function, the while function, and looking at just some syntax and formatting for both. Uh, I've got some examples that I wanted to share, and then we're going to wrap up looking at while as a replacement for recursive custom functions. Uh, so just a uh, show of hands, how many of you regularly use let in your FileMaker development? Okay, so that's pretty much everybody, so I'm going to skip some slides. Um, but I will say uh, one of the things, like, it, let has been in the platform since FileMaker 7. It was probably FileMaker 9 before I felt comfortable enough using it just because it was a little intimidating. And I still do this today. I find it very helpful as I use Text Expander to insert the Wellerized version so that when I start working with it, I see it like this and it just helps break it down uh, for me very nicely. Um, the other thing that I would want to say is that there is an optional section if you're only declaring a single variable, you can leave out the square brackets. I would argue that you should just leave in the square brackets that way if you have to edit that calculation later, you don't have to think about, okay, where do they go back in? Um, now part of this is my CDO condition, which is like OCD except the letters are in alphabetic order like they're supposed to be. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so uh, I've got a few examples. I'm not going to dive into FileMaker uh, just for the sake of time, uh, but what, I'll, what I've done on the slides is I've called out each script you know, by name, and then I try to reference where that function is used by line number in the script so you can dig into it later if you need to. Uh, so just so that everybody knows what we're dealing with, this is a non-let function, um, just to create some random email addresses for my demo file. And of course, you got stuff that's repeated. It's, I wouldn't want to come back in six months and try to figure out what's wrong, even though I wrote it, um, just because you know, that happens. And so of course, that's where let lets you come in, kind of parse things out, work through the calculation sequentially. And uh, depending on how you name those variables, of course, I like to think of it as self-commenting. Uh, if you have the right names of your variables, you kind of follow through and you see what's going on there. Um, so that's the let version of that same calculation. Uh, another area where I like to use let is when I'm doing custom dialogues, um, only because I like to give the user the most specific choice you know, possible so there's no ambiguity as far as what I want them to do. And so by having a single uh, set uh, show custom dialogue, but with a calculation, I can determine what the message is that they see. Here's a couple examples here. So what that looks like, is that you use one of the uh, properties of let is to be able to declare those local or the script variables. So you can set your names of your buttons there, come up with your calculation, use that in this, you know, that same uh, result there in your message. And so then when you set up your custom dialog and you set your variable or the button names, you're using variables. So you're only having to maintain that code in one spot. So if you ever change it, it just kind of flows in and you don't have to worry about going back into it. Um, another place where I like to use let is just in the uh, execute SQL when I'm doing that just because it lets me lay it out in a nice orderly fashion. I can see what my clauses are and kind of build that and then dive in. All right. So on to while. Um, so while is brand new with FileMaker 18. Probably the, one of the features I was most excited to get my hands on and start to play with. And of course this is as you start to use it in the specify calculation dialog, this is what comes up. Naturally, I had to come up with the Wellerized version. So when I type my little snippet into Text Expander, this is what I get um, so that I can see those four pieces uh, that I want to be working with. Um, very similar to let, uh, you've got that section in the first set of square brackets that are your initial variables uh, where you're setting you know, the locals, the script variables, the global variables to your expression, which is you know calculation that includes functions, fields, constants, whatever you need to get the results that you need as you're setting things up and initializing. Uh, moving on down, I'm going to skip one thing and come back to it, but in that second square bracket, the second set of square brackets is where you find the logic that is repeated uh, while that function is being evaluated. And yes, I said the logic that is being repeated uh, while the function is being evaluated. Um, so again, you're building you know, declaring variables with your expressions to get the result that you need, but then that section of logic is going to be repeated for you. Okay. Backing up to the exit condition, um, that appears here um, before the repeated logic because it is evaluated before the repeated logic. So definitely want to keep that in mind. Also, uh, the function continues to loop through that repeated logic while this condition remains true. 
So those are the two things you have to keep in mind as you're constructing that exit condition is to make sure that you're repeating the logic the proper number of times to get the result because you may have it one less, one more, and you're going to have, you know, the results are not going to be what you want. So certainly keep those things in mind. And because it exits when the condition becomes false, if the condition starts out as false, it never evaluates that repeated logic. It just goes and jumps right to the result. So those are, those are the, probably the main gotchas as you're using this function is just making sure your exit condition is going to be uh, executing at the proper time. And then, of course, then you get to your final result, which could just be the result of your repeated logic, or you can go ahead and nest in a let function or even another while function, depending upon the complexity of the problem that you're trying to solve. Okay, uh, so we have two examples. Uh, one is one that I did with let, and the other one is with while, just to kind of show you what the, the differences would look like. Um, and you know, we had a uh, client contact us, said, we want to send this email to our client whenever they place an order, but we don't want it to be a PDF. We just want to have it in the body of an email. Um, so how would you tackle that? Well, before while, um, I would usually go in, create a calculated field in my line items table, put the pieces of text together that I need, put in the right uh, separator character so I have this calculated field per line item. And then as you go in, evaluate the script, um, it would use the list function to grab all of that information from the calculated field for all the related records, go ahead and drop it in, do the substitute, you know, here we're grabbing, you know, name and address just to fill out that email. Now, it all works great, um, but what I've just done is I've created some overhead in my file because I've got a calculation field whose only purpose is to populate that email message. And so that's where WOW now lets us go ahead and do all of that in a single script step if we want to. Uh, so here we are, you know, building the while. We've initialized the variables, still using list uh, to get some information, but all I'm doing is getting the value count so I know, okay, how many related records do I need to worry about? So that helps me set my exit condition. Um, then in the while, or in that repeated logic section, is, you know, very similar to what I did in the calculated field, it's just that my t context has changed. I'm not evaluating it in a table, now I'm evaluating it in a script, so there's a little bit more text there, but you know, the calculation itself is the same. And then I come down and I go ahead, went ahead and nested that let statement inside of my uh, while loop for the result. You know, still grabbing the same name, still grabbing the same address, uh, but what I've done is, because I've got my result from that repeated logic, just going ahead and dropping that into the substitute, and now I have my email message in a single script step. Okay, lastly, um, while, in my opinion, is tailor-made as a replacement for recursive custom functions, because um, that was the first use case that I thought of when I heard that that was going to be, you know, in FileMaker 18. And of course, you know, before while, you had to write a custom function that did one iteration of the task, and then you had to figure out, okay, now I need to have the function call itself so that logic can be repeated. Now with while, we just take that repeated logic section from our custom function, drop it in that second set of square brackets, make sure we have our exit condition set correctly, and you know we're good to go. So here's the examples that we're gonna look at uh, quickly. Uh, the first one is a custom function that I've used for a number of years. It came from Brian Dunning's you know, custom function website, and all it does is you point it at a field on your, uh, you know, in your table, your layout, whatever, and then it just grabs all of the values from your found set, so you have a nice return separated list, and then you can do other things with it. Um, there's, you know, I have the uh, script step, and then the function itself, and you see it's a very straightforward function. Converting that to its wild equivalent, you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of difference, especially in the calculation part for the section that's repeated, and it's just a matter of making sure we've got our found count, and then exiting at the proper time to make sure that we, you know, we're not, especially trying to go one over or you know, the one less. Um, the second example, uh, comparing and contrasting, is a function that I've uh, worked on myself because I've always been trying to find the best way to pass multiple values into my subscripts. And about a year ago, I figured out, well, FileMaker has JSON, so now I can build name value pairs, wrap all of that, send this JSON object to my subscript, and because of the properties of let and evaluate, I can declare those variables dynamically, whether I have one, two, or 10. One script step will declare all those variables in my 
uh, subscript, and you know I'm done. And so this is the, you know the function that I put together you know to do that. Um, so the here's the while equivalent again looks very similar. It's just a matter of making sure okay how many name value pairs do I have, making sure I loop through that proper number of times, and then I get my result. Okay. Now that brought me to this question is that, okay, the results are the same between recursion and while. Is there any performance difference between the two? Um, so the way that I tested that <clears throat> was that I went ahead and built a JSON object that contained 5,000 name value pairs, wrote two different scripts using the two different methods, and just executed them. You know, I ran, put in a couple extra steps to grab start time, stop time, show me a nice custom dialogue that did the math. And what I found is with recursion, and those 5,000 name value pairs, I would see times between, say, 55 to 90 seconds, depending on did I do that first, did I do other things in the file, was something else running on my computer, okay? And granted, that was a long time, but I also wanted to make sure I had enough time to actually see if there was a difference. And of course, if you have 5,000 parameters you're passing to a subscript, you may want to think about what your script is doing, but that's another story. Um, when I ran the same thing using the while function, what I discovered, it was consistently five to six seconds. So there is a significant performance difference from what I saw. Um, so definitely something to consider, but then you also have to consider your own time in that, do I need to go back to all of my uh, solutions, make changes, because like I said, you're not gonna be passing 5,000 parameters or parsing things out, it may be a handful, um, but only you would know that. And then the last thing too is, uh, I would recommend is that when you update your custom functions, if that's what you decide to do, is you don't wanna just replace the custom function, actually just replace the logic in the custom function so that those custom functions still may remain portable. If you wanna import from one to the other, just rebuild it with the while inside and let it do that and then it remains portable. Uh, so two last things. Um, don't have this plays into while, uh, but there is a new function that's called set recursion uh, that you now have control over how many maximum iterations you're able to do uh, as it loops through. Um, so uh, Clay mentioned this in his under the hood session from yesterday, so you'll be able to go back and check out the recording, get some information there. Uh, naturally, there's also a help file. And uh, the other thing that we didn't have time to dive into today is that you do have to be aware of the scope of those variables as you're using them inside your while function, especially if you're nesting lets and additional while statements inside. Um, but there's a, an excellent resource. Uh, Wim put together a great blog article, uh, and there's the link to that article that you can kind of see how that works out. So um, there will be updates. I got a few things that got tweaked on the slides. And... Thank you. I guess that's, I talk faster than I thought, so.